Well, a little after 29 minutes past the hour. Let's head to my interview now with the terrific uh, Paul Barron. Uh, Paul is the uh, CEO. Well, he owns many businesses, by the way. Uh, but today we're talking about the company of which he's a CEO, The Wall Printer. And it's an idea new to the United States, uh, but it's been known for years throughout Asia, India, Middle East, Europe. And it's the idea of painting indoor and outdoor murals inexpensively. And artists do this. Uh, building owners love it. And uh, he can print on walls of any surface material reliably and accurately. And so he decided to go for it. So let's talk to him right now, the CEO of The Wall Printer, Paul Barron. On the other end of our line this morning is uh, a gentleman who has been called a serial entrepreneur, (laughs) always looking for the next big thing. And he's come up with this uh, concept of wall printing. Uh, not an area of expertise for me at all, but it certainly is for him. It's expanded greatly uh, throughout uh, not only the U.S., but other countries as well. And so let's bring him in this morning to talk about this uh, concept and what it's all about and how you can get involved, uh, either doing business uh, with this gentleman or uh, purchasing uh, uh, the goods and services that, that they have. So let's uh, welcome to the show this morning from The Wall Printer, uh, Paul Barron. Good morning, Paul. How are you today? Good morning, Paul. Right back at you. I thank you very much for that introduction. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and introduce uh, myself to your audience and have them understand a little bit about what we're doing, not only for ourselves and our customers, but also for people who are looking to get into businesses throughout uh, the United States, Canada, South America, uh, UK, all being our territories. Yeah, well, very good. It's kind of an exciting idea when I came across it. Uh, either you contacted me or somebody from your company contacted me, and I thought, well, this is a great idea. and I can't wait to get you on the show. Uh, now, before we get to your uh, uh, your company and what exactly you do with the wall printer, it's my understanding you began your professional life actually as a math teacher. Is that correct? That is correct. I, I have a degree in mathematics, and I I thought uh, I would like to teach and did that um, out of school uh, after I graduated, uh, State University of New York, New Paltz, New York, and I taught high school math for about three years. But then I got sidetracked uh, into the world of business. I opened up a retail store while I was teaching those first couple of years. Um, I had put myself through college uh, to some extent, stringing tennis rackets for the athletic department at the university. And I was a tennis player and still am and uh, love the sport. And I decided after I graduated, I was going to try to continue that providing that service uh, and actually built up uh, three uh, retail tennis specialty shops at the time. And I just got hooked on the world of business, wearing the different hats to create a business. And I migrated out of teaching after about three years um, to pursue the world of business. And that started my journey on uh, opening and starting up what has come to be about a dozen different businesses over the more than the years I'd like to count. (laughs) No, I understand it. You know, it seems like a lot of the really good teachers do other things as well. In your case, you know, you opened a business on the side, other people do other things on the side, but uh, they're so into the teaching and they're so into being successful and helping others. They're always looking for other opportunities. And, And as teachers, of course, not that it's an easy profession at all, because it isn't. It is not easy to be a good teacher. Uh, but we do have more time off than the average uh, man or woman on the street. And we get a month or two off in the summer. We certainly get Christmas Day and Easter. We get those off. Not everybody does. And so if you're energetic and motivated and intelligent and want to achieve success, if you're a really good teacher, you're always looking for opportunities, too. Did you find that to be the case? Uh, You were a terrific teacher. You enjoyed it. But you thought "Eh, there might be more out there. Well, Paul, I I, I agree with you um, to a very large extent. But I also look at the characteristics of that good teacher, as you described, um, as being one that not only um, hopefully has a passion for what they've learned and what they are capable uh, for the good ones to be able to communicate to others. But there's also a, a, a personality trait uh, of t- good teachers, I believe. Um, and I'd like to think that I was one, um, despite the fact I didn't stay in the profession that long. But the personality trait that I think uh, makes for a good teacher is, is just that willingness to give back. And even though, um, and to see the, to see the growth of others, 
Um, and whether that be through mathematics, as um, you and I have taught, um, or whether it's uh, in some other field, uh, I don't care whether it's uh, shop and uh, home economics or cooking or science, biology, or law, whatever. Um, if, you, if you look and can gain a pleasure from seeing the success of others, it, whether it be in what they're learning or where they go from there, um, you have the ingredients not only to be a good teacher, but you have the ingredients of also being a good business person and building a team and being able to uh, communicate the uh, positive aspects uh, and value of whatever product or service that you're going to deliver. Um, I like to think of myself as I've grown over the years <clears throat> as somebody who has been product and industry agnostic. That's how I always describe myself. Um, while being an entrepreneur, you do have to um, take a risk uh, if you're going to pursue a specific business and start it from scratch. And you also have to wear a lot of hats. But over the years, you usually, uh, and some people it's a shorter path, some people it's longer. You learn what you're good at and what you're not good at. Uh, in my case, I believe it was the sales and marketing hats uh, that I wore best. Uh, administration, um, which is also one of the reasons why I stopped teaching, I think, is that um, it was so bogged down with a lot of administrative activities that it took a lot away from the pleasure I had in simply teaching the students and doing uh, what I needed to do uh, for the courses that I was teaching. Uh, there was a lot of other things involved that it really I did not enjoy. And so uh, same thing goes in business. You know, some people are very good in finance. Some people are good in handling um, hiring and firing and people management. Uh, some people are good in sourcing materials, uh, vendor relations, strategic partnerships, um, and customer relations and sales and marketing. Uh, the latter two are the ones that I enjoy the most. And I've been fortunate enough to learn over the years um, how to build a good team to support uh, me in allowing me to do what that is. And again, as I mentioned, Paul, the product, the service wasn't so important. Um, mm -hmm. when I found, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the wall printer as being something very interesting, uh, that's been at the core of all the business ventures I've done. Um, I've, I've marketed and brought to market a <clears throat> headband headphone that was manufactured in China, a baby bottle manufactured in Austria, um, software and technology in the communications fields from a Russian technology company. Um, media board for internet access uh, from Israel, um, a self-service dog wash from Australia, um, and then my current venture, which I hope is my last one because this is the most exciting to me of everything I've done uh, on a number of levels. Number one, it does get that wow effect, just as you saw it when you took a look at a 15 or 30 second video from our website, thewallprinter.com. Right. Right. And uh, you get it right away, what it does. It's a very simple concept. Um, and when I saw it, though, uh, as you mentioned, you know, it, it really, you know, it's kind of impressive to see this work on a couple of levels, not the least of which is that nobody's ever seen this before. Right. While the technology is not new, it's been around for about 10 years and confined to Asia, um, primarily because it does take a lot to train, support, um, and uh, to keep, keep people uh, and the machines functioning properly. Uh, and people learning how to use the machines. So it was not easily done or communicated from overseas. And I literally was the first one to take this product and bring it to the United States. Uh, it's a tried and true product, but nobody's ever seen it before. Uh, that's kind of good news and bad news, as I tell my potential customers. The good news is you're going to be the first kid on the block doing vertical printing or wall printing. And the bad news is you're going to be the first kid on the block doing it. So you have to educate your customers as to what that is, uh, what the value is, what benefits it provides to your customers who want wall art um, in their homes or offices. Uh, but uh, to the point of getting involved in something like this, as I mentioned with all those other products and services that I've done in my past, uh, usually I see something and I point it out to my wife and I say, hey, honey, come take a look at this. Well, the first thing she does when she hears me say that is she runs and cuts all, all my credit cards <laughs> and she hides my bank account uh, because she thinks that I'm going to go ahead and invest in something. Right. Uh, this, this was one of the first things that she looked at and said, wow, that's pretty impressive. Um, mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like it. And mm -hmm. we think of ourselves as consumers like anybody else. We're American. We're, we, we, we see products if you can afford it and you can see that there's some benefit to you to buy it. You know, you might do that, whether it's 
whether it's food, whether it's, uh, you know, a car or anything or a house or anything in between, um, you know, if it, if it interests you and you think it's going to add some quality to your life, you may go ahead and buy it. This is something that we'd never seen before, which was unusual. But um, I went all in on it and yeah. I negotiated with the manufacturer and I developed a, a business plan. And uh, right now we're, we've achieved quite a bit of success over the first year it's been introduced um, COVID notwithstanding, mm-hmm. um, again, that was a good news, bad news story for us. Right. Uh, the bad news, obviously, like everybody else experienced, um, it restricted travel. It restricted uh, people um, actually seeing, touching, understanding what this machine was because they couldn't come to Wilmington, North Carolina, where we have our U.S. headquarters. And uh, so nobody was traveling to see this machine. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like uh, trying to you know, buy a food shop or a, or a plumbing uh, franchise, and we are not a franchise, but just as an example, uh, as an analogy, uh, you, if you wanted to be in the food business, you could see lots of restaurants. If you wanted to be in the landscaping business, you could see lots of that or pest control or anything else. This you couldn't see anywhere. Mm-hmm. So it restricted us, and that was the bad news for about 10 months in the beginning of 2020. The good news was We had no idea what it was, this vertical printing, this wall printing machine. So what we did is we spent all that time building the team, learning the machines, converting everything from the foreign languages in which it was developed into English, Spanish, Portuguese, French, uh, to support the markets that I owned, uh, again, which is all of North, South America, Canada, Mexico, Caribbean, uh, the UK. Uh, And now we have machines in Ireland, in Colombia, in Mexico, in about uh, two dozen states in the United States, in a couple of the provinces in Canada, and we're growing rapidly. Well, maybe just take us through uh, what this is all about. We're talking to uh, the CEO of the wall printer, Paul Barron, this morning, about this whole concept of uh, wall printing. And on your website, it, it, it mentions the idea of painting indoor and outdoor uh, murals, somewhat inexpensively. Is this uh, Obviously, it's something uh, businesses might want to have, either inside or outside. Is it also something for the home or is it more of a concentration on business? And maybe just take us through it. What is it that you do that hasn't been done before through this process? So uh, so first, let's let's make it clear that the wall printer is a machine that um, costs anywhere from $20,000 to about $30,000. So it's not your desktop printer, um, nor is it your $125,000, $150,000 flatbed printer that printed print signs, posters, and uh, vinyl stickers, and that kind of vehicle graphics, um, things like that. It is not photo quality. It is near photo quality. It prints at a very high resolution, 1440 DPI. Um, it's, uh, it, it gives a beautiful picture. Um, it is not the same as, let's say, the resolution you might see in a high-quality picture on your, on your computer. Um, and, but what it does do, um, it, it prints any digital image any image at all that can be put into a standard format, whether it be a JPEG, a vector file preferably, because vector files, which are Adobe Illustrator or EPS or TIFF files are the extensions of those. People in graphics and art might recognize those terms a little bit more easily than others, but that's all you need to know really to know what kind of images you need to have for a wall printer to work. Um, It takes those images just on a USB stick, you import it, put it on a USB stick, download it from the internet or your PC, put it on a a USB, plug that into the port on the wall printer, and then the software that's included uh, will size that to the uh, size you want on a wall, and that wall can be any surface at all. It could be your standard wall board sheetrock that you have inside homes. It could be brick, it could be stucco, it could be metal, glass. Um, makes no difference what, what the surface is. Um, and again, indoors or outdoors, because the types of inks can withstand cracking or fading and sunlight and freezing and all of that. They're like an oil um, acrylic type of hard shell ink um, that, that can uh, withstand those types of elements. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as far as your question, and I apologize, but I give a lot of background to put context to this. Um, I didn't forget, but if I ever do forget or go off track too much, Paul, (laughs) please feel free to throw out the lasso and rein me in uh, because (laughs) I get very passionate about this and I might drift us astray. Um, But the the customers, okay, our customers, we we provide the machines, we provide the training, the support, the materials, the inks. We, We do all of that for people to be in business. 
So we're looking for people who want to take this on, make an investment of anywhere from twenty-five dollars to $35,000 for the equipment. Of course, businesses do involve other expenses as well. But to get started in this business, you need a budget of about $30,000. And with that said, you buy a printer from us, one printer minimally, and then you open up a market locally and you begin to print on homes, residential, commercial, hospitals, schools. It makes no difference. If there's a wall, you can print on it. If there's wall art desired, and if somebody wants to change the wall art from us, all you do is you primer over it, or if it's on glass or metal, you could scrape it off and start again. Um, but what it does, the value it adds, is that you can take a, a, a digital image and very quickly, from 20 to over 400 square feet per hour, at a cost of only about 25 cents per square foot in ink, once you have the machine, um, you can go ahead and, and print beautiful large murals or even small pictures or text on offices, in, you know, or, or walls in, in, in offices. Uh, you could print large landscapes. You could print beautiful, large images, no limit to the height or the width. The only thing that limits you indoors is the walls and ceilings. We're not like vinyl stickers that can go edge to edge or wall to or floor to ceiling because the machine does require about a foot all around. So you, you have limitations if it's indoors by walls and ceilings so that it doesn't fill up the whole space. But that's not what the wall printer is designed for. It's not wallpaper. It's not a vinyl sticker. It's not toxic like vinyl is. Uh, and it will go places that those are the traditional ways of putting uh, images right onto walls um, will, uh, will not be able to do. You can't put vinyl stickers outdoors on brick, on cement, on stucco. Um, and, and the nice thing about the wall printer is it'll print um, every color, um, every image. We ha happen to have a patent on being able to print white ink uh, we're the only printer in the world that does that. And uh, so you could print images with, with white and transparent images like cartoon characters or um, action figures, things like that, which have uh, and not cover over the wall completely as you would with some kind of a, a sticker or, or painting. Um, and it just saves time. It helps artists because it allows them to create digitally, which most artists do before they actually put paintbrush to wall but it doesn't let somebody stay there for two weeks painting a large mural on a, on a wall or a building. Um, we'll do that in a couple of hours. That's kind of what it's about. If somebody visits our website, thewallprinter.com, it takes only about 15 to 30 seconds to take a look at one of the videos and really not only get what it does, but to see also how it attracts other people. Much of our business, uh, our customer's business, uh, the people who have the wall printings in their community, when they're printing something, whether it be in somebody's home or in an office or outside on a building in the community, uh, on a butcher shop or, or, or in a school, when people see the machine work, it attracts so much attention. They get so many referrals. Um, customers, customers for our customers are the least, uh, least uh, of the problem of this machine. It's really just being able to handle the time it takes to do the the wall printing, and that's part of the growth of the local businesses too, is you start with one printer, but as you develop more customers, you add printers, you add people, you, you employ more people. Um, it's really a, a nice business to, to grow, not only for yourself, your family, and it's also good for existing businesses like painters or general contractors who go into homes and, and commercial uh, buildings and they understand the customers. If it's a residence, they know that one of the kids is into sports and the other child might be into ballet and the husband has a favorite sports team and uh, or the family wants a nice beach surfing scene um, on the wall in their den um, and in offices maybe the conference room wants a nice calming landscape mural on the wall all of these things are easily accomplished and and other companies like painters and general contractors who understand their customers have now an additional revenue source when they add the wall printer to their existing business model. So it's good for startups. We've had everything from parents and grandparents whose children are coming out of school and not sure what they want to do. You know, for the cost of a car, $25,000 or so, they can put their kids into business doing something that's a really um, beneficial and, and exciting service business and teaches a lot of a lot of different skills as well. Yeah, very much so. Now, before the wall printer came along, before this machine came along, your business and all that good stuff, 
how did they do murals? Was it only the artist would show up with uh, brushes and paint? Is it, was that the only way to do it before this machine? Well, you know, putting artwork on wall comes in various forms. Yes, uh, a painter would come and do a do a mural on a wall. Um, and that's something, of course, that's not only time uh, restricted. Uh, it, it takes a lot of time for an artist to, to do that manually. Um, it also uh, is affected by weather. Um, you know, if it starts raining or something, you know, once again, and that's the same for a wall printer. You're not going to print out in, in the rain or snow or a storm or something. So you have to go away and start again. Uh, other forms of putting art onto a wall besides just hanging a painting um, or a poster or something and framing it and putting it on the wall are things like vinyl stickers um, and, again, wallpaper, vinyl stickers. Um, and, and, again, this doesn't cost any more than the cost of any of those things and usually much less. Um, a, a painter is going to be the most expensive, of course, and take the most time for somebody to hand paint something. Um, and, the, uh, and the vinyl sticker costs about the same as what, what a wall print would cost, um, maybe more. Uh, but again, that's uh, it's vinyl stickers. Um, there are a lot of places you can't put them uh, because the vinyl is toxic. You can't put it outdoors at all um, because it doesn't stick to the surfaces. And you can't use it in places like schools and hospitals because the vinyl is toxic, um, as opposed to our inks, which are not, and they, they're washable. Um, so, so you have a lot of other formats that are competitive to putting art on walls. Uh, this is just another way. You know, I, I say to people, if you, you know, we're not trying to put anybody out of business. We're trying to help the artist. Uh, we even have uh, a lot of instances where the wall printer prints quickly the body of the, of the wall mural. And then the artist comes in and kind of does the border around it and embellishes it a little bit um, with the personalized um, extension of the mural they originally created digitally. So there's a lot of complementary ways that artists and the wall printer work together. Uh, plus, it saves them time so they can duplicate their art on various uh, venues and uh, buildings, and they don't have to uh, spend their time at the site uh, constantly uh, painting. All right. Yeah, definitely. So uh, we're talking to Paul Barron this morning, the CEO of The Wall Printer. Uh, no, uh, and you can reach him at thewallprinter.com. And uh, Paul, if, if somebody owns a business or a restaurant, a home, and they decide, you know, this sounds pretty good for me. This is what I want on my walls. How do they go about it? Do they contact you? Uh, do they contact the local uh, merchant? Uh, what's the best way for a customer to approach this? So, so part, of our, part of our business plan is we do provide a lot of marketing support, even though our business model is to sell the wall printers and to sell territories so that people can be exclusive wall printers within their communities. That's our basic business model. But every day we get hundreds of inquiries through our Facebook, uh, social media um, venues like Instagram, TikTok, um, our, our Google ads, our website. Uh, we get hundreds of inquiries every single day. 90% of those are people who generally want to say either, what's the price? Because they've never seen anything like this before. And when they find out it's not your $50 desktop printer, but it's a $25,000 um, piece of equipment, commercial equipment, um, that requires an actual business around it, mm -hmm. um, they, uh, they disappear. But some subset of those people are people who say, hmm, this is interesting. I've got a wall. I've got a business in my uh, yeah, I've got a wall in my home or my office. Uh, that would be really interesting. Um, can I have the name of a local wall printer? Or they ask the same question you did. Do we provide the service, which we do not? What we do is we wait till there's a wall printer in that area, and then we provide those leads to them. Part of our training is also supporting local marketing by our wall printers. So when somebody takes on a community, whether it be Baltimore or Naples, Florida or Miami or um, Temecula, California, or Columbia, South America. Um, we will help them with video and text and whatever they need to do to provide their local marketing. It's, it's very minimally, I mean, Facebook is the best way uh, to, to reach a local market and target a demographic of businesses, homeowners, uh, people who might, might have this kind of uh, interest um, in, in, in putting some wall art into their homes or businesses. So finding the customers is really not a problem, and, and that's something that we support uh, in terms of marketing. In fact, we even contribute um, if they do local marketing through Facebook ads or Instagram or something else, and there's a fee associated with that uh, by those vendors, 
um, we help them and we, we split actually the cost for their first three months to kind of jumpstart their business. After that, referrals will take over or they'll continue with their own local advertising in whatever way is successful for them. Once again, we are not a franchise. We don't dip into our customers' pockets. So whatever they do locally um, is, is generally at their expense um, after their first three months that we help them. Um, and then uh, they can market it any way they want. They can also have their own name and brand. We actually encourage that, and about 90% of our customers um, do choose to create their own brand, or they already have a business with their own name and brand. And we put that on the wall printer with their contact information and their email address, their website, their phone number, so that when people see this machine going, they get additional referrals from that. Um, but uh, that's that's basically the business model, and we uh, and we help support that and the uh, generation of local business for them in these ways. All right. Sounds very exciting. And uh, it's been great to talk to you. We've been talking to Paul Barron from The Wall Printer. You can get him at thewallprinter.com. And uh, Paul, if people have uh, further questions or they need more information, what's the best way to, to contact you? Just go through the website. Is that the best way? The website is the best way. Go to the contact page. There's a form you can fill out with your name and your location. And then somebody will get back to you very promptly in terms of setting up either a call or just sending you information for you to review and study. Thewallprinter.com, again, is our website, thewallprinter.com, and it will provide a lot of information. Uh, But also, Paul, I'd like your audience to understand that we do enjoy helping people get into business. And that's not only our business, too. I'm a mentor at the local university, UNCW, University of North Carolina in Wilmington. Uh, We help a lot of startup businesses with questions they might have. I encourage people to reach out if they are in business or looking to be in business. I welcome them to connect with me personally on LinkedIn. You can find me, Paul Barron, um, on LinkedIn. And uh, my my background is very transparent. Um, It's an open book there as well. But if people have questions of a business nature, not necessarily the wall printer, I invite those connections as well. But wall printing is an exciting business opportunity if people have the financial capability to begin a business and also have the mindset to take a risk on something that's a little bit new and are willing to do that. uh, I believe they will find uh, the return on their investment uh, extremely rewarding. Okay. Well, very good. Very exciting and uh, great information. Keep us posted if new information comes out or if you expand the business. So get, get in touch with us. We'll get you back on. We've been talking to uh, Paul Barron from The Wall Printer. Reach out at thewallprinter.com. And uh, Paul Barron, uh, go out there and have a great day. Let's talk again soon. Thanks so much. I really appreciate the opportunity to meet your audience. You bet. Thank you. Well, there you go. What about uh, that for an idea for business? You can get a mural instead of uh, two or three weeks with a painter, you know, showing up every day and diligently doing his or her work. You can call Paul Barron at The Wall Printer and thewallprinter.com. And we thank uh, Paul Barron for all of his time on this morning's show.